Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Kid Stays in the Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Cooper, and joining me today is... Solomon Fablin. Ugh. I'm sorry, you didn't give me enough time. You should be able to come up with these things um, right off the top of your head. Well, I was thinking of something like to do with like Jewish holidays. but That's I'm... cultural appropriation, you can't do that. Well, it's not appropriation, that's my name. You said you were thinking of something to do with Jewish holidays. And my name is Solomon Ezra. It's already Jewish. Okay. Joining me today is uh, Solomon Cooper, and we are going to be discussing Steven Spielberg's latest movie, The Fablemans. Uh, This is a movie that I think flew under a lot of people's radars, kind kind of including mine. Like, I I only found out that it even existed about a month or two ago, which for a Spielberg movie... I consider that flying under the radar. Really? Uh, I mean, yeah. Like you, we know about the next Transformers movie a year before it's coming out. That's true. So, I mean, when did you find out about this movie? Well, I found out about movies at the movie theater. What does that mean? What? Like well, you're, you're sitting down and the movie comes on, and you're like, "Oh, this exists." No, I mean, I find out about movies during all those trailers. Oh, like the old, the old fashioned way. Yeah, I don't like look up new movies that are coming out and read a bunch of movie websites. But when did you hear about the Fablemans? Then I don't remember seeing a trailer for that at the movie theater. I didn't see that actually. I that was that was at the movie theater where I just t- turned on. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the Fablemans is a semi fictionalized account of. Uh, Essentially, Steven Spielberg's coming of age. Uh, are you going to just sit there and yawn in my face disrespectfully the entire podcast? Um, I did not yawn. None of the viewers heard me yawn. But all the all the watchers did. I said none of the viewers. <laughs> they they all saw. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a semi fictionalized. I I say semi. I don't know how much of it is fictionalized or not. But it's essentially a biopic. Yeah. Um, it's a a cinematic autobiography, if you will. Um, but you know, it has been fictionalized. The character's name is not, I said fictionalized, fictionalized. The, the main character's name is not Steven Spielberg. No, it's not. Um, it's, uh, Sam, Sammy Fableman. And I was surprised though, whenever I went and looked, looked it up that the only thing that his classmates, his high school classmates, uh, dis- dismissed or said that they don't remember being true. The only thing was that they didn't remember him ever having a girlfriend. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But other than that, like him shooting the um, the beach day, the di- senior di- ditch day, mm-hmm. uh, that was all true. Like all that stuff. Wow. Um, they don't remember having a girlfriend. That's so funny. Anyway, be, because this is a essentially a coming of age movie, or and it's a, you know, it's, I guess kind of just a family drama um, centered around you know one particular member of the family. It, it's hard for me to know exactly w- w- from what angle we should approach this movie. Um, there was a part of me that wanted to to do a more traditional thing that I always do of like um if you if you yawn I, yawn, I was just uh, opening my mouth for air. <laughs> yeah, that's called yawning. Um if 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 we should tackle this uh as a comparison to other Steven Spielberg movies, um and I'm not gonna lie, I still don't exactly have what tack I think that approaching it from a from a plot um point of view is not the right not the right take. Um, so yeah, I actually, why don't we do this? What would you say, or if there are, I mean, it's perfectly fine. If there's not, what would you say your, um, connection to Spielberg in general is? And are there any of the movies there that you would consider like a profound part of your life? Dude, this is going to suck. Cause I've seen a lot of Spielberg's movies, I think, but I don't know the names of all of them. That's I've seen impossible. I've seen E. T. Well, I know the names, I just don't know how to connect them to the director. So I've seen E. T. 
you know the name, you know the names, but you don't know how to connect them to the director. Yeah, it's like one of those like test questions where it's like all the answers on one side and all the answers on the other side, and you have to like draw a line to all of them. So you're trying to say you know what the name of these movies are, but you don't know if that Steven Spielberg directed them. Yes, I guess. But okay, I've seen E.T. Batteries not included. Nope. Nope. He just produced that. Okay. Um, the other one. What does E.T. mean to you? E.T. I saw when I was young. Um, I don't fully remember the whole like thing. I like I remember like Reese's Pieces. I'm not asking about that. I'm asking what it mean, means to you. What did it mean to you when you saw it? Well, I was so young. I don't feel like it had a like. I don't feel like it. Everybody was really young usually when they saw E.T. Unless you're, they're old. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I like it didn't like change my life. Okay. I just saw it. I have an ET, a huge ET stuffed. I have a huge stuffed ET. And it's like life size and it's awesome. And I love him. But like, I wouldn't say like it changed me. Okay. So it wasn't a movie that like just that you gravitated towards. Sure. Wasn't that impactful? I mean, I, I remember watching it with you and you were sobbed I, like a baby, but. I did sob like a baby, but I was also. Okay, whatever. It's a movie for kids. I know, but like, I feel like it can't impact me at that age. For it's some not true. Reason. I know. I know it's not true, but I just feel like, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Um, Jaws. Is that him? Yes. That was him? Yeah. Are you kidding me? We just did a podcast about Jaws. I know. I'm just making sure because I don't because you just stared at me and I was making sure I wasn't like an idiot. Um, you made yourself sound more like an idiot by by saying that. That movie's really good. I mean, it didn't once that that movie didn't impact me. I just felt like it looked really great, and it was really great all the way around. I felt like I, I got impacted. Okay, you got impacted by telling all your people about. Have you heard this movie Jaws, which has been out for a hundred thousand years? Um, and that is, what else are there? What else are there? Yeah. Or is there? Is there that I've seen? Oh my God. This is embarrassing. I told you this is going to suck for me. First of all, you didn't even mention Indiana Jones. Oh, that's really cringe. Yes, I know. I'm sitting here cringing. I don't really, I'm not paying attention about the directors. For me, that's just like Harrison Ford, the movie. You're a buffoon. I know. But like whenever I'm seeing a movie, I'm not like, I'm like, who's the main character? Who's the director? Steven Spielberg, though, is one of those iconic, like, um, so this backfired on me spectacularly. Instead of um, illustrating my point, it just uh, made everybody realize that you're cinematically illiterate. Amen. Everybody knows, honestly, I'm not, not not trying to be rude to you. No, you are. A, a lay person who doesn't even care about movies probably could have named more Steven Spielberg movies than you just now did. And you didn't even name Indiana Jones. That's true. You And you named one that was wrong. So you named three movies and one of them wasn't a Spielberg movie. Okay, well, it was produced by him and it felt... Let me just tell you, if I went and asked... A regular person on the street to name me whatever as many Steven Spielberg movies as they could. They would they would definitely say Jaws and Indiana Jones, and then they would probably say Schindler's List. Oh, and they would I haven't seen that. What I haven't seen that. Well, that's embarrassing. They'd probably say Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I haven't seen that. Stop outing yourself as a buffoon. We understand that you haven't seen any of these movies. I'm just saying a lay person would know these so these movies. I named two of the three movies that I have seen by Steven Spielberg. But it's embarrassing. You should at least know. I I I, ask you I, 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 I movies I've seen. I know. Um. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. You you had to ask if. If you if you were sure that Steven Spielberg directed Jaws, I was making sure because you looked at me with a very blank face. Yes, like the shark in Jaws. That was my Im- Im- imitation of okay. him. Anyway, I'm just saying that um, I know more Steven Spielberg movies than I've seen, but uh, I haven't seen uh, some of them. Very few, though. I'm trying to think. I haven't seen the Vietnam movie. I can't even remember what it's called now. Disrespectful. But either way. Disrespectful. The point is that Steven Spielberg is one of those directors that 
kind of transcends, um, well, what you said earlier, which is I don't pay attention to directors. Almost everybody, all, honestly, almost everybody knows who Steven Spielberg is. I know who Steven Spielberg is. I'm just saying, like, if you if they when you say I don't pay attention, I just think about Harrison Ford. Okay. Look. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. Most people couldn't tell you who directed Top Gun. They just think of Tom Cruise. Most people couldn't t- tell you who directed a lot of different movies. There's very few directors who've transcended that. I mean, honestly, with like Francis Ford Coppola, you know, like he put his name in front of a lot of the stuff that he did. Um, but even then, if I said who directed The Godfather, you know, a, an average person may not know. They may, they may not be able to tell you. Steven Spielberg is one of those unique people who... He had such a very specific style and tone, and he was so popular, and his movies were such huge smash hits. Um, so, uh, look, we don't have time to, to get into his, his whole thing, but I think The Fablemans really, really captures... What? What's happening? Sorry, nothing. I'm good. Why'd you, like, wheeze into the microphone? And it went... Okay, why did you do that? <laughs> Just taking a take an exhale. Uh, you know, you're a sycophant for this Steven Spielberg guy. I'm a sycophant for him? Yeah, he's one of the greatest directors of all time. Dad, I'm aware, and I like him a lot. I just hadn't seen all of his movies. You haven't seen anything? I've seen three of his movies. You are you are illiterate. You're cinematically illiterate. Okay. Why are you making me go back to this? I already said this. Sorry, continue. Um, so S- Spielberg has this very specific thing uh, that he does, especially with his with his uh, older movies, like E.T. or Close Encounters, where he makes these fantastical family movies that have this, this they're tinged with a kind of, sadness that feels very real and relatable. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, Indiana Jones, not that type of movie. No. But um, when you, when I think of a movie like E.T., sure, you can like look at all the little quotes that say, you know, wonderful, uplifting, blah, 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 amazing adventure. I, I would say that E.T., the mood I would describe E.T. in is very much a prepubescent melancholy. Like prepubescent melancholy. Well, like the movie still is a kind of coming of age story to an extent, I guess. But the the, the mood of the movie is very melancholy, I, I feel like. Um Maybe that's just how I experienced it, but do, does that make sense to you? Yes. What What would you? I like I said, I was like six. So what? How, do you think I remember every detail about the movie? Did I mention a single detail about the movie just now? You mentioned the tone of the movie, and I just remember being very sad. So yes, I agree that it's melancholy. Okay, so why didn't you just say that? Okay. <laughs> just. I just remember sobbing and crying. After this episode of the podcast, I'll be taking Solomon out back, and let's just say there will be a switch involved. A switch? Don't try and call CPS, because I'm not saying what I'm going to do with the switch. I could just be showing it to him. It could be a Nintendo switch. It won't be. It'll be a branch from a tree, and I'll be striking him with it. You'll, not, <laughs> now they're going to call CPS. Um, but yeah, like, so... S- some of Steven Spielberg's more recent movies have had this, like, they, you've seen Hook also. Okay. Sure. Why do you say it like that? Because I didn't watch the whole thing at all. Okay, well, Hook, um, what Hook does is a kind of phony baloney manufactured melancholy. Very, like, feels like a, <clears throat> like a like a studio note. I don't know how to explain it, it especially because I think Hook was actually a, a, a passion passion project for Spielberg. But and it does feel very Spielbergian in many ways. But the the that kind of melancholy, sad tone that he's able to inject in his movies, in Hook feels 
fake. fake. And that it hasn't that disease, if you will, hasn't affected a lot of his later movies. Where, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ready Player One you, that could have been directed by anyone. So that was Steven Spielberg. Yeah, I knew it. But you wouldn't know by watching it. It feels like it was made by a machine. Say, it didn't feel like Steven Spielberg at all. No, exactly. He, you can't see his voice, and that's the thing. There's a lot of movies that he's made, even the good ones, like The Post. Remember The Post? You saw that on I your birthday. That. that was Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Okay, dude. I think he just did too many movies. <laughs> How it, I could have just guess some movies and it would have been yes, right. Yes, I know. He's the most famous director in the world. Okay, all right. So, um, movies like that where he um, does a great job. That's a good movie. I like it, but it doesn't feel like a Spielberg movie. You know what I mean? It just feels like a good director made it. Um, we're at time now, so we're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. And then we'll be right back with our discussion of the Fablemans. Peace. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything. And, and basically, I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine, wine and vinyl. vinyl. <laughs> so check us out on RogueMediaNetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. Welcome back to the Kids Stays in the Podcast, and hopefully our discussion of the Fablemans. Why did you say hopefully? 
Yeah. Also, why did your voice crack so many times? It didn't crack. That was like, man, how are you gonna get a leading role in a in a play with that thin, cracking voice? You're being really rude right now, and the reason I said hopefully is because we've just been rambling on about this movie, about around the movie, and instead of being just except instead of diving in, you hate whenever I dive instead in. Instead of diving in, well, in, in our defense, we have been talking about Steven Spielberg, and I think this movie, considering it's about Steven Spielberg, that context is important. I mean, that's true. But, but you're right; we do it. Some we do need to actually get into the movie. So, um. Why don't we just go ahead and start with uh, one of your world famous plot synopsis? Let's not do that. Synopses. No, you don't. I think I heard from all the viewers slash listeners that they hate my plot synopses. They do, but they love to listen to it. Okay. They think it's terrible. They said it sounds like um, a mentally disabled monkey doing a plot synopsis with a pot, patch of dirt and a stick. Okay. But they still want to hear it. <laughs> All right. Um, why is there a stick in a patch of dirt? That's because monkeys can't talk. Uh, okay. So how does that sound like that? Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, this is going to blow This is so... very easy. The easiest. This is, this should be the easiest plot synopsis in the world. Really? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I'm po- positive. Come on, let's go. Clock's ticking. Dude, I have no clue how to start this. How is it so easy? Okay. This is going to be so bad. I can't even, I don't even know where to start. There's so much in the movie, but it's just a plot synopsis. Just about the plot. Mm Mm-hmm. This movie is about a boy and his family. And what he does as a director and the stages of life that he goes through being a little and old director and the problem with his families. That was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty okay. It was just Uh, really um, poorly said. Yeah, it was horrendously (laughs) said. Like I said, monkey with a stick (laughs) and a patch of dirt. But it did make sense. But it was... The plot. But it was pretty good. I would say The Fablemans is a coming-of-age story about Sammy Fableman and how he handles growing up, his family life, and his growing love for film. Yeah. Basically what I said. I said growing twice, so I would actually rephrase that. But either way. So that's what it is. I mean, this 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 is essentially a, like I said, a fictionalized story of Steven Spielberg's childhood, um, how he fell in love with film, and then how he handled um, one of the most devastating parts of his life, which was his parents slowly dissolving marriage. Um, Which I thought was going to happen when he was much younger, but it didn't even happen until he was like in high school. Pretty late in high school, it seemed like. Senior. Yeah. Seemed like in the movie. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the reasons why it feels important to talk about Spielberg specifically around this movie. Um, but because this movie from the second it starts almost, you feel him as a, as a, um, voice as a, uh, authorial voice. You know what I mean? Like, this feels like a Steven Spielberg movie is what I'm trying to say. Okay, yes. Yeah. I got that. And you sense it almost immediately. The way he shoots, he is not, there is nothing about this project that feels like some kind of, uh, you know, phoned in thing or, you know, some kind of whatever. Um, I was actually remember telling Solomon this, you know, Tarantino famously says he's only making one more movie and because like how many directors have made more than this many good movies, and then they start making crappy movies or mediocre movies or okay movies. Yeah. And Spielberg has definitely made some of those. You know what I mean? But for him to come back at his age and after how many so many movies with a movie that feels so deeply like a Spielberg movie, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's worth it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to join the team that says Tarantino needs to just stop saying that he's going to not only make one more movie. 
be okay with the fact that you might make seven terrible movies. But if you make seven terrible movies afterwards, just so we can get one really great one, it's worth it for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this movie feels like a Spielberg movie. Um, so I'm saying that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, mean, I feel like I'm kind of hogging the conversation. But considering the fact that you are a self-proclaimed, I never ever want to see a Steven Spielberg movie for the rest of my okay. life All person. Right. Never said that. Um, based on the movies that you have seen, did you feel that? Like, Did you feel like you could tell this was made by Steven Spielberg? I felt the energy. Because I did just watch Jaws, everyone. Um, so I could tell just by the way things were shot and like that it felt so like everything felt so real and like genuine with every single angle that was filmed. I mean, so I gotta say, but if, um, and again, I, I know, understand you don't have to lie. Not lie. You haven't seen a lot of his movies, but, um, if you didn't know when we just had gone to see the movie, would you have like leaned over and been like, this feels like a Spielberg movie? Okay, well, I would never do that with anything ever. What? So probably not. Well, this movie, I would say, if I had no idea who made it, I would be watching it, and I would have been like, "This feels like a Steven Spielberg movie." Like the way it's mi- the way it's lit, the way that he has like the um, soft, like kind of lighting bleeding into the windows at all times. Like, no, I understand that, but I feel like I wouldn't be able to just recognize the director off just by watching it yeah i mean i would have i mean you can you can watch movies and, and people will say they're spielbergian right they'll be like oh like uh, super eight is very clearly a riff on his movies from like the 80s um do you remember that movie at all no i don't think i watched it you have seen it a bunch of times oh i'm gonna get confused with hateful eight which i did not watch no that's tarantino Super 8 is the one with the kids, and they're making like a little home movie. Oh, my God. I'm not going to go into it. It doesn't matter. J.J. Abrams directed it. Okay. You have seen it a bunch of times. Okay. Oh, the switch is going to get bigger. <laughs> it's okay. Um, anyway, so it it's hard. Like, I really don't. I'm having a hard time, um, like I said, finding an angle on this movie because it's about somebody who's so famous and it's about them finding their passion. passion. So why don't we just jump into the why don't we jump into the like the the family aspects of it? What did you, like so we're, we're we're watching what essentially is a perfectly fine childhood. You know what I mean? This is not a this is not about a abused child who lives under the stairs like Harry Potter. For the most part he's he has a, a good Jew, Jewish upbringing and his traumas are the traumas of all of us. Which is kind of what makes this movie, I think, very relatable. Obviously, as non-Jewish folks, we weren't, we're not dealing with anti-Semitism and some of those things that he was having to deal with. Um, but what did you think about that? Like, this is a two and a half hour long movie. You're a 15 year old kid. Um, this is a movie where it's just about somebody growing up and finding out they love film and they're good at it. Um, how did you think that they handled? showing that and making it compelling okay you start talking about the family life Mm -hmm. so that's what you want me to talk about just go man just go but you like did a lot of weird things as that prelude to letting me talk so i'm letting you talk i'm just gonna talk about the the family life i guess um so the family life (laughs) okay i need to stop saying family life i think it was captured so perfectly and i know that it was his life so he has some basis to go off of but like but he's like in his 60s now so that's true it was happened yeah. like five divided by his age years ago um but just the just the essence of watching because he's the oldest child and i'm also the oldest child um watching him feeling like he has to like have the burden of seeing what his parents was doing and then like having to make sure that no one knows about all these secrets that he's hearing about and whatever. And then like he's taking care of the kids and he's also like filming and doing his passions and, but he's having to balance him doing his passions over like doing something for his family that would make them feel happier. 
Like it was just a lot of it was like really sad and also really great. But like it was just really sad watching him having to like balance all that stuff on one little kid's back. And that's the the thing that I think makes it so universal is that and is that Steven Spielberg is a larger than life person. You know what I mean? He's like I would say he's one of the first directors to become a celebrity themselves. You know, mm-hmm. um, like I, like you kind of said before, but like for a long time, most people went to the movies based on who the movie star was. Steven Spielberg's one of the ma- only mainstream directors that people go. I mean, don't get me wrong, Tarantino and blah blah blah. But I'm saying, like, well, first of all, Spielberg came first. <laughs> but that for mainstream normies that are not film people, people would go see movies because it was a Spielberg movie, right? So this is a huge, larger than life person. So the fact that his biopic would be so small, that's the wrong word, normal. There you go. You know what I mean? His life is very relatable. The things that he's going through. The, the burdens that this kid's going through, or m- most of us have them. We just also don't have the staggering weight of, you know, whatever, unbearable talent <laughs> on our backs. But yeah, and I, 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 we've gone a really long time without even mentioning the performances. So um, the his parents are played by Paul Dano. That's the guy who's the Riddler. Yep. Yep. Um, and Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams, right? Yeah. I don't know. I believe that's right. That's going to be really embarrassing if it's not. Um, and they are fantastic. Um, his mom is a, um, an artist also who's yeah. kind of flighty, uh, seemed like prone to depression, depression, anxiety, maybe having a little bit too much fun sometimes, mental illness. Why are you saying all those things? What do you mean? What mental illness? I'm not saying she didn't, but... Depression is mental illness. But... I feel like all of the... I feel like she was constantly like... I don't know. What are you doing? I'm just making sure that that I got the actress right. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, I don't know. I just feel like she was... She she seemed like the most... Because I'm also an artist who just wants to pursue my dreams. Um... I also felt really related to her because um, she does seem like everything around her was like it felt like it was collapsing and everything seemed bigger than it was. And like her mood would just constantly be shifting. You know, mm, you see her mood shift a couple times. Yes, yeah, so we saw her mood shift a couple times. Yeah. So I feel like she had a lot of like I wouldn't problems. S- <laughs> That's not how I experienced her at all. Okay. I felt like she um, she was a kind of a little bit of a tragic figure. She had kind of given up her art to have a family, but she seemed like she had made peace with that. I mean, the only time I really saw her start to, like when she went to therapy, um, was because she was upset because she was, as a, a spoiler, but sorry, um, but because she was essentially having an emotional, at least, affair um, with her husband's best friend. And she basically, her marriage was comprised of those two things, right? So she had her husband, who Paul Dano plays, and he provides one level of things, but the thing that he's not able to provide as far as um, joviality, maybe, you know what I mean? It's hard to explain. She gets from his best friend. Uh, yeah. Benny, and that he's played by Seth Rogen, which is really good. He was really great. Yeah. Um. So basically, her marriage is essentially to these two people, you yeah. know. And then at one point, when the family has to move away and they move to California, and then Benny has to stay behind, that's when I would say, yeah, she's getting depressed. But that's that's not like mental illness depression. That's oh, someone made me move away from my boyfriend. D- depression. There was more than that. I feel. She hits him. So? Uh, So? Really hard. She slaps him in the back. It leaves a red mark. She slaps him in the back one time in her entire life. That doesn't mean you're mentally ill. And she was sleeping a lot then. And he was being a huge jerk. Because he knew all the problems. 
But their problems weren't mental illness. She was just cheating on her husband emotionally. That's not mentally ill. It's just n- not nice. Uh, whatever. It's just very weird that you're just saying that she's a mentally ill person. Well, it sounds way worse than you're saying it. I'm not saying that she's like has a problem. Well, we argued about this for too long. Now we're out of time to finish talking about the movie. So I hope you're happy. Anyway, Paul Dano's great. He's a really good dad no and blah, way. blah, blah. We're going to end it. Just... We have to. The movie, the time is out. Time is up. But people can people can phone in. They can subscribe to our Patreon and ask, us to, do another Patreon thir- ask us to do another 30 minutes on the you movie. You screwed us over by talking about Spieven Spielberg for so long. Spieven? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, look. I know we talked around it, and I was being very, very theoretical. I apologize. This is an incredibly warm movie. It wraps itself around you like a blanket. I loved every single second of this movie, and I would watch it again. I will watch it every single year. I will watch it every six months. I'll watch it every month. Okay. Let's not exaggerate, Solomon. I also love this movie. It was like, how long was it? Two and a half hours? Mm -hmm. And I have a really short attention span, and- Everyone knows it, and I fall asleep all the time in every movie, and I also got no sleep, but I stayed up and watched this movie without any uppers whatsoever, because this movie was just perfect. It was perfectly paced, perfect for every single person who's ever had a normal life, or ever had a life at all. And also for anybody who's ever had a dream. Amen. It is, uh, I I just, I cannot express how much I love it. I'm going to give this film um, 24 out of 24 frames per second. Wow. I'm going to give this 16 holes in a film out of 10 holes in a film. 16 out of 10? Yeah. All right, that's our show. We apologize uh, for not being able to get into this a little bit deeper. But just know that it's great. But maybe there will be a part two. Hopefully. We will, actually. I decided we are. All right. Take care. Bye. Happy holidays. Follow us on Instagram at the Kid in the Pick and on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Till next time. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.